So we did some fancy factoring and canceled here. So generally, you can still use all those algebra tricks. So there's multiplying by conjugate over conjugate, uh, factoring very carefully. What's the other one? Add or subtract fractions with common denominator. And factor cancel, but I already said factor. So those are the three main tricks. Are you recording this? Yes, I hope so. Yes, I am. So we're going to do one more limit before I talk about uh, how to show a limit doesn't exist. Algebra ideas. Well, first of all, I'm going to plug in 0, 0. So we're going to use some algebra. All right, why is L'Hopital's rule not very useful here? What does L'Hopital's rule say to do? Derivative with respect to? X, <laughs> Y, <laughs> both, neither. Uh, so that's where it gets a little more complicated. So you can't just, ah, if I take the X derivative of the top and the bottom, everything will be fine. Uh, so we're going to use algebra instead. All right, ideas. Not many ideas. So we can multiply by conjugate to the bottom. There's really not many other uh, ideas out there, at least none that came to my mind, other than one really tricky one, which we'll do in a minute, because this won't work. It's a good try. It's really the only tool that you know of that's applicable here. The only other option is say nothing. So don't multiply when you don't have to. So if it's not conjugate, don't distribute it. So I don't really see a way to cancel stuff out. So I'm going to go, let's not do this. All right, how about factoring? What could I factor out of the numerator? It's a little silly. Let's factor out y squared. So I'm going to factor y squared out of the denominator. What do I have to add to 1 so that when I multiply it, I get x squared plus y squared? I'm going to get x squared over y squared, like that. Algebra questions? So I'm not sure how this one works out, but if, if we look at degrees, we basically have a cubic on the top and degree 2, or a quadratic, in the denominator. So back in the day, this would look maybe like uh, 4x cubed over Maybe 2x squared. This is a good old days bubble right here. And then you can say, oh, I'm just going to cancel some x's here. I just have a two, limit of 2x, which is 0, because my numerator 1. If my denominator 1, if my denominator degree was higher, then this would be uh, either infinity or negative infinity or does not exist. If you're going to use that trick, couldn't you have just done that in the first step? 
Uh, which trick are we talking about? That's the intuition. The degree in the numerator is higher than the degree in the denominator. Okay. So the numerator is more powerful. And I just wrote a really easy example of one degree higher in the numerator, right. approaching zero. But doesn't that work with the, the first step, too, though, where it's just the square root of the bottom and keep it on the top? So. All right, so I'm not sure what the actual limit is because my notes don't ever have answers. <laughs> okay. So what we're going to do is look at, we're going to come back to this problem, but we're going to look at approaching 0, 0 in different ways. It is 0. It is 0? OK. Do they do it with algebra, I'm assuming? Fancy. We got epsilon, delta, and all Oh. Definitions? All right, let's come back to this one. <laughs> All right, so I labeled 0, 0. So how do we approach it? Well, unfortunately, there's not just two ways. There's not just approach from the left, approach from the right. So not only are there more than two ways to approach 0, 0, I'll use a blue pen to draw some example approaches. So what if I approach on the positive x-axis? My points will look like x comma 0 as x goes to 0, as every point on the x-axis is going to look like that. Uh, now specifically, I have x approaching 0 from the positive side to go from from the right side. If I want to go on the left side, it would be x approaches 0 from the negative axis. Uh, what if I go, if I want to approach on the negative y-axis, what do points look like? 0, comma, y. Yep, 0, y, where y is approaching 0, in this case, from the negative side or the bottom side. So I could pick any path. I could go. Let's look at this path right here. It's supposed to be along the line x equals y. So it should have a slope of 1. I have to sneak it in there because I took up too much space with my 0, comma y below. What do points look like on this line, on this path right here? I could write x, comma y. I could also write, yes, if I could write what I say, x, comma x, because x equals y. And then in this case, x is approaching 0 from the negative side. Let's go along this line. So this line has a slope negative 1. So this one is y equals negative x, or x equals negative y, however you want to write it. So I could go, oops, not x, x. If I use x for the first coordinate, what's the second coordinate? Negative x, because y is negative x. And what is x approaching in order to go this direction? This is a little bit, certainly 0, but what side? Tricky. All right, let's think of the first coordinate, the actual x coordinate. Is the x coordinate, the first coordinate, approaching 0 from the positive or negative side? Negative. It's going from the left. You could do it the other one, but then you'd think, ah, well, it's negative x is positive, which means regular x is negative. So it means x is approaching 0 from the negative side. Too many negatives to think about. So I want the easy one. All right, all these four options are all straight lines or line segments. Is it the only way I can approach 0, 0? Nope. What if I approach like a quadratic? 
That's y equals x squared. So this will look like x comma, what's the second coordinate? x squared. As x approaches which zero? Positive zero. All right, so there's a quadratic. I could do a cubic. I could do a square root. I could do a lot of different types of approaches. I'm running out of room to draw them without overlapping them. So I think this will be a good enough sample right here. If we want to summarize all the lines, You could just measure the angle theta you want to approach in. Well, no, let's skip that. So for a limit to exist, It must exist from any direction and path. So you better get the same value no matter how you arrived at 0, 0, or whatever your particular point is. Now, how many directions are there? There's infinitely many. So you don't have an infinite amount of time to show that every single one uh, approaches the same number. So you can't actually go and plug in all possible values. So this idea is pretty useless for showing a derivative exists. But let's think of the opposite, showing a derivative, de or not derivative, a limit does not exist. Oh, I should talk, I should describe what a path is. So here's A. So a path is a curve, alpha, that goes from Usually we'll go uh, 0 to 1 into however many dimensions r n that you have. Uh, I think in curves, curve, it doesn't actually have to be smooth, uh, but most of ours are going to be smooth. And alpha of either 0 or a 1, it doesn't matter. What does the book use? Oh, they just go alpha t1 equals a. So now your limit x approaches some a f of x, you can rewrite it. Well, I shouldn't use the equal sign because, well, if it exists, it'll be equal to limit t approaches t1 f of alpha of t. So what did we do? We just took the input x and fed it the path. So instead of uh, getting any point close to a, I'm feeding it these specific points along this path right here. If your limit exists, it doesn't matter what path I take. I get the same value.
This is sort of like a left limit or a right limit, or if they don't agree, then the limit doesn't exist. The only problem is there's not just a left and a right, there's actually infinitely many ways to approach. So to show something doesn't exist, you're going to pick two approaches and then show that there's a different limit. So if any two paths give a different limit, then a limit does not exist. So if you can find some alpha 1 and alpha 2 that give you a different value, then you can say your limit does not exist. It's really important that the paths end at A. So whatever your final t value is. I like to go 0 to 1. Just keep it easy. And so in that case, t1 would be 1. And at the last time value, you're actually at A. So I said this, but I'm just going to write it down. Conversely, finding two paths yielding the same limit really means nothing. There are infinitely many more to try. And you'll never get to infinity. However many finite ones you do, you'll have infinity left. So don't try it. Only works if there's two, which happens on a line. I'm giving you a problem that I'm telling you the limit does not exist. And I want you to figure out two paths that show there's a different value. And this is another xy approach to 0, 0. And the function is y over x. All right, what is the domain of y over x? It's pretty easy to write down. x, y, such that? x cannot be 0. There you go. So none of your paths better use x coordinate of 0. There's still infinitely many more paths to choose. Don't approach along the x-axis or any path that crosses the x-axis. I think I gave you enough paths in blue to pick two that won't uh, give you the same value. So you can pick really any of these except the one on the x-axis won't work because that's completely not in the domain. So they don't go on the x-axis. But the other four paths I have are not on the x-axis. So I'll start you off with the first one. I define paths a little differently than I uh, wrote them up there. So I'll choose path 1. Let's go in the first quadrant along the y equals x line. So I'll call this alpha 1 of t. I think we can just go TT on this right here, where T approaches 0 from the positive side. So 
So if you're feeling a little lost, it's probably because of notation. It's a little bit strange. We're feeding functions, paths. So f of xy is y over x. That's our original function. What I'm going to do is feed it alpha 1 of t. So what is alpha 1? It is t comma t. You don't need to think any further than that. The second variable is going to be a numerator. The first is a denominator. So it's just second coordinate divided by first coordinate. That's just the y over x, uh, the function that we have. Wow, this is really nice. It's always 1. It's going to be a very easy limit when we write that down. What is my uh, t1 value, my final value? So what t value do I need to actually be at the origin 0, 0? 0? That's how I go from some point in the line to the origin. My t is going to approach 0 from the positive side. That's my t1 value right there, my final t value. All right, this easy, limit is super easy. Limit of 1 is always 1. So that was not hard to do. So we approached on this diagonal path, and we got 1. So I want you to approach on another path and not get 1. There's probably, well, there's at least one path I could think of that gives you 1. But if, if you choose that one and you get 1, choose another one. I don't, off the top of my head, I can't think of a second one that gives you 1. So let me show you which one not to use. Don't do this one. That will also give you 1. So don't do that path right there. So you basically get negative t over negative t. All right, so any other straight line diagonal path will work. You could do a 1 in quadrant 2, 1 in quadrant 4. You can get crazy and go parabolic. It's really not that crazy. So whatever path you want. And I'll give you two minutes to do this. The notation's a little strange. All right, I'm going to do the quadratic path just because I feel like it. So it's along y equals x squared. So 
but basically x is t, so y is that thing squared. So it's t, t squared. And I could approach 0 on either side, but let's go and the, do the positive 0. So any questions about that path? And of course I get alpha 2 of 0 is the point or the vector 0, 0. So I arrive at the correct location. So it's a y over x, yeah. All right, so we have a limit of t as t approaches 0, which is 0. And 0 is not 1. They're sort of close, but they have to be equal for the limit to actually exist. All right, if you used uh, t negative t or negative t t, one of the two, you got negative 1 for your limit. And anybody else get a number aside from 0 or 1 or negative 1? All right, you could have gone with something like uh, t comma 7t, and this would approach along a steep line like that, and you would get something like 7 or 1 7 or something like that. So you can pick whatever. You could basically get any number out of this limit that you want, which means obviously approaching from any direction is not going to work if I can get any number I want out of some direction. All right, continuity is next. All right, you know the definition of continuity. I must be brave and say it. Wants to pretend they're brave and say it. Uh, yep. So limit exists. I can't say positive or negative side anymore because there's infinite sides. But limit exists. That's not enough though. What is it equal to? No limit on this side. F of a. All right, limit equals value. It's a really fast way to summarize continuous. So your limit is the same as your value. Well, guess what? Same exact thing works here. Only difference is x and a are multiple two, three, four dimensional coordinates. So same exact definition works for continuity. So if you have a uh, subset of your domain, a function f is continuous on that set S if any x in S So if you take any x, any element of S, then f is continuous at that x value. So you're continuous on a set if you're continuous at every point inside the set. So that's exactly what it meant on intervals, except they were just every number in the interval. But in this case, it's just every point in the set. Now if you just say a continuous function, a function is continuous if it is continuous on its domain. Oops, there's no apostrophe S. Yes. This domain. So 
So in a lot of senses, continuity is actually easier to understand because you can write it down nicely. The only problem is the limit part is the real tricky part. Value parts, that's always easy. Just put the number in, uh, there we go. But the actual uh, limit part is more tricky. So where is this function continuous? Well, from what we know about rational functions, it's continuous in most places. What's the only chance you have to divide by 0? At 0, At zero, zero. So this first piece looks continuous everywhere away from 0. From 0, 0, I should say. Even if x is 0, as long as y is not 0, you're not divided by 0. You just have a rational function. So rational functions are continuous on their domains. <coughs> So all you really need to do is check the one point that's not in the domain of this rational function. All right, easy question. What's f of 0, 0? Just one zero. F of zero zero is just zero. There's a second second piece up here. All right. So the question is, does this limit equal zero? It's always easier to show a limit does not exist. Usually, unless there's obvious algebra, I can just see it's going to be a zero over zero. So if it's going to be algebra, it's not obvious. So try to show this limit does not exist. Pick two different paths and see what you get. Now generally, I like the x equals y path. That's always a good one. If you're just picking th uh, two paths, I would choose x equals y. And then I would choose most likely a quadratic path. And then some weird uh, you know, x equals or y equals 10x path, something like that. Usually, you don't need to leave the first quadrant. Uh, that can kind of depend. If everything is squared, it doesn't matter if x is positive or negative if you square, end up squaring it. Uh, so sometimes you do need to leave the quadrant to get a different path. But I think this one, try to pick two different paths and see if you can get different values here.
they should have gotten different numbers. Like I said, you could get lucky and choose two different paths to give you the same value, but the chance you do that is pretty low unless your paths look really similar. So usually if you go with the linear path and a quadratic path, you'll generally be pretty safe. Or if you go with linear path and a much different slope linear path, it's another good way to go. All right, so limit does not exist, so it's definitely not going to equal zero.